Beneficent, the merciful, we bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and we're forever thankful to Allah for his interventions in our affairs in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, the great Mahdi, and we're forever thankful to Allah for his coming and raising up in our midst the promised Messiah, the exalted Christ, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I can never thank Allah and his Christ enough for fashioning one for us today as that standard bearer of truth, a divine teacher, guide, and warner. And he's also a messenger of Allah to us today. We're speaking of the national representative of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, who sits in his seat by his permission with speak of none other than our big brother and friend, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It is in their names I greet you in the greeting words of peace. We said in the language of our forefathers, of Assalamu Alaikum. And as you know, that only means peace be unto you. You know, Jesus never did speak English, so he didn't say hi or what's up. He always left and greeted his disciples and those around him with peace. And that's what we send to you today. We thank you once again for joining in and tuning in to us. I am Jerry, student minister, Jerry Muhammad, prison reform minister for the Nation of Islam in the state of Virginia. It's my honor and pleasure in representing and coming out of Muhammad Mosque number 24, located at 104 Coordin Avenue, under the leadership of student minister Tracy Muhammad, and we would ask you to please come out this coming Sunday for a Father's Day message. Once again, this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock at 104 Coordin Avenue to hear from our beloved brother, the local representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, student minister Tracy Muhammad, and that's 104 Coordin Avenue. And also, we have two, Brother Kill will be releasing a new video on Father's Day, Saturday, June the 16th, uh, Father and Son, the original fathers of the earth. So stay tuned for that. Brother Kill will be releasing a new video for Father's Day, this coming Saturday, June the 16th. And also, we always like to ask you, have you picked up your latest edition of the finest newspaper on the planet Earth? This is not only local, but international, as well as national news. It's called The Final Call, produced and brought to you by the Nation of Islam, published by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and we would pray that you would get your copy every week from the beautiful brothers that's either you find us out in the streets and highways and byways as you found Jesus doing. 
And also, if you'd like to have a home delivery, please give us a call. That number is area code 804-334-1524. And we will, give, we will make a home delivery to you as well. But make sure that you pick up this Final Call newspaper and learn and study what is in this marvelous, it's more than a newspaper, it's really a spiritual guide and connecting God's words to reality. And in here we always have guidance from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and his servant and student, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and from our brother Angel Jibril, powerful articles from Mother Tanetta and other articles that's in our paper. So please make sure you pick up your local, your, um, this week's edition, America's March Toward Police State. Brothers and sisters, my honor to share with you this evening. We're gonna open the phones for calls a little later in the second half, but I wanted to speak with us about fathers. And the topic that I chose for the few minutes that we're being together is the role of a father. And when I speak of role of a father, I'm speaking of role is spelled R-O-L-L -L instead of R-O-L-E. Because when we look at a father, we're looking at someone not who's pretending, someone who's not playing a role or a function as. We're talking about one who is the driving force, whereas we know role means to pass, it means to extend. And the origin of that word father really comes from a Latin word, which means pattern, or pater, or father. Father is another word for patron, but the root idea and definition of father is one who advances the institution of or furthers the development of. So as we get ready for Father's Day coming up Sunday, I pray we fall not victim of another hallmark event and where we get lovely cards and they will say Happy Father's Day and we move on for another day. They do the same thing for Mother's Day. Every day is Father's Day. Every day is Mother's Day. For the scripture says, honor your mother and your father that your days may be long upon the land. Now, when we look at this, it's more of a, um, a day that they really make money, where everybody has a Father's Day special, a sale here and a sale there. But what I'm asking us to do is to look deeper into the role of a father. And you cannot be a good father unless you are a good son. Because a father is one who furthers the institution of family, institution of human beings, and the role of a father as Jesus saw it and spoke of is the role of a creator and one who nurtures. So when we speak of a father, we're not talking so much of a male organ because we always hear that sound all the time that you know you can be a, a male but not a father. There's a lot of truth there. But I want us to look at becoming fathers because there's an ancestry there. Because as a father, I want to share with us how we should, one of the ways to look at that, and I want to use out of 1 Chronicle, the 28th chapter, I want to quote the ninth verse. And this is David speaking to his son Solomon. And he says, you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all of the imaginations of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, 
he will cast you off forever. Here, David is sharing with Solomon, know the God of your father. Well, who's the God of your father? Constantly in the Old Testament, you hear them de defining God as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of your father. Well, my question to us this evening is, who's your father, black man? Because if you don't know who your father is, how can you be a son? And if you are a son, who are you a son of? And then how can you ever be a father? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, which was given permission and was told to take the seat of the house, and sit as a father over the house. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is at the seat and he is as a father. The father is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. The father is Master Farad Muhammad. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is giving us that pattern of what a true father, a righteous father, father is and how we are to carry out the function of a father to teach our children to raise to bring them up to rear them in a way that will make them not better fathers but the best and that is one who is in accord with almighty god allah and that's what the enemy does not want. And he wants us to constantly take father as being something very insignificant. Because it's not by accident that this world loves to talk about the founding fathers. Well, we know historically that the founding fathers was not our father. Our fathers was out there. They had our fathers as slaves. And as slaves, then how can they be our father? So if they're not our father, but if you look at us, we will advance their agenda more so than we would our fathers. And then our fathers have suffered a lot to get us to this point. And scripture speaks of one coming who's in our midst today that is the son of man. And that son of man is so powerful in what he is doing because the scripture speaks of this one coming and what he will do. Now it's not by accident that when he comes, the enemy will not receive him. I want to share with you out of scripture for the few minutes that we're going to be here, how we are really walking right out of scripture and everything that the prophets prophesied about is right here at our door and being manifested. And the enemy is trying to cover or color our sight so that we have eyes, but we can't see. We have ears and we can't hear. And it's because of who we have chosen to be our father. Well, of course, I want to start and look at looking at um, John John 16 talks about what this mighty one is to come to do for us and he's known as the comforter Jesus is speaking nevertheless I tell you the truth I tell you the truth that it's expedient for you that I go away for if I not go away the comforter will not come unto you but if I depart I will send him unto you and when he not it he. So this comforter is not some kind of spook or ghost. It's not a holy ghost coming that you don't know who he is. He's a man coming under the cover of darkness, but he is a man. And his work is being seen and felt throughout the world. And especially here in Richmond, Virginia, and America. And but because the enemy wants us to not see him for who he is. 
Because the only way you're going to know who this man is, you're going to have to see him in the same sight as Allah and his Christ sees him and has placed him in scripture. Now he's called the comforter, but it says, and when he comes, look at this now, he will reprove, he will reprove the world of sin. Well, why would he have to reprove the world of sin? Because this world is a sinful world. Now, when he comes to reprove the world, Look how the world will turn that around, that reproval around, and instead of being corrected, they call him a hater. He's teaching hate. Reprove here means to criticize, to correct, to disapprove of, to strongly refute, to speak disapproving of, to reject, to reject. So when this one comes, and he has come, he comes to reject this world, this world's teachings, and the way we as God's people have been taught must be rejected. And when he comes doing what the scripture said he would be doing, they much rather call him a hater. He's an anti-Semite, he's anti-this, he's anti-that, but he's doing what Allah has birthed him to do. And that is that he will reprove the world, of, the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And the beauty of scripture, of this particular scripture, it tells you of sin because they believe not on him. See, you know, you don't believe on Jesus because if you truly believe Jesus, then you would know who the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is if you truly knew who Jesus of 2,000 years was because he was only a sign of what we're seeing today. Now you, he's saying that he will reprove the world of righteousness. Why he has to correct the world of righteousness because those that we're saying that we are projecting righteousness or we, we are righteous people, look at our deeds and our conducts. Our people out there suffering. And they're suffering because of the leadership that we have placed in front of them. And they're constantly being fed that which will not help them. So they keep us evolving around a foster father that really has no interest, no love, no care for you and I. And as long as they can keep us poor, raggedy, hungry, and out of doors, then they will keep the program going. He will reprove that type of world. Now they love to keep us poor. Now for my time run, I want to share with us very quickly, that's why the conversation in dealing with politics, are we talking about the middle class? But what about the poor? Because Jesus spoke about the poor. He cared about the poor. And when we hear the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the guidance that he is giving us, it's not by accident, brothers and sisters, that we're the only people, if you're listening, and I'm sure you are, that all we want to do is vote. Go out and vote. Vote for this. Vote for that. But we never gear our people towards voting for an agenda never gearing them towards voting for that which is right for us collectively. Because whether you vote Democrat or Republican, it makes no difference. Yeah, and I don't care who you put in office, we have not been, our unity has been so divided. And for us to get up in these pulpits on Sundays and put down and talk about the nation of Islam and the wonderful work that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is doing in our community as though he's, he doesn't even exist, then that's really, brothers and sisters, that's our downfall and our condemnation. Because the scripture says it straight up, you would hate him without a cause. Why do you hate the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? It's not everyone, but it's only those that are in leadership that has the ear of the people. But I want to share something with you. 
Because in these institutions that we go into, in and out federal and at the city jail, the love is always to see our young brothers come and listen to a man of God. Truly, I'm not just throwing that word out there because I know exactly what I'm talking about. We use it too loosely, you ask me, because in order for you to be a man of God, you got to ask them which God are they a man of. But to see our young brothers come in and then have the opportunity to hear from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and share with them wisdom and knowledge dealing with, and that's one of the things they hate about the nation of Islam, is that we deal with the black man's essence the essence of the black man and dealing with him at the core and connecting him back to his creator. And as you connect him back to his creator, then you will find him growing. And so we deal with our issues and some would call that race teaching or hate teaching. No, it's not. It's just actual facts. And once they know that they are direct descendants of God himself, then they have a much better appreciation for who they are. And if we are on Sunday preaching about how we should love everybody and never focus on the love for one another, that's how we're able to shoot one another with no remorse. That's how we're able to have such high rates of domestic violence on us. The disrespect of our young sisters on, in the streets on us. We say we love our children, but what are we willing to do for them? Are we willing to build a reality so that our children can live there? Or we just allow our open enemy, which has taken the fathership role to build a world and we are just to function in their world? No, no, no. That, that's not happening because when this man of God comes on the scene, he is to reprove the world of sin and the world of righteousness and the world of judgment. Yes. And when you look at as you deal with poverty, it's not bags. Now, I want to share something very quickly. If you have your ink pen, write these down. In Proverbs 10, 15, wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is never, never. Well, pardon me. The mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. And it says rich men's wealth is his strong city. Rich men's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. In other words, the destruction of the poor is the rich man's poverty. I'm going to say that again. In Proverbs 10 verse 15. The destruction of the poor, to destroy the poor, is the rich man's poverty. So any man that would come to unify us, give us an agenda of freedom through independence, becomes an enemy. And we can talk about jobs, but the man can hire you today and fire you tomorrow. But if you become independent, if you're able to produce a job for yourself, and as the community teach more about love for one another and pooling our resources and to let our young people know that whatever business you go into, that is nothing wrong with us. Stop for a moment first. Let's see, can I find my brother or sister that looks like me who has that same business that I would go and patronize them? Some say, well, that's reverse racism. I will share with you to shut up and just be quiet. Because everyone, every people take care of their own. We have too much money, over a trillion dollars, leaving out of our pockets, going to try to keep the rich rich. Hmm, boy. But the destruction of the poor is the rich man's poverty. Love not sleep, it tells us. Love not sleep, lest you come to poverty. Open thine eyes and thou shalt be satisfied. Mind you, I'm still dealing with father. Now, as we get ready to close this end of, the, uh, of our talk this afternoon, I want to share something with you from out of the Holy Quran. But I also want 
to, as a father, share with us out of Genesis and dealing with Abraham. Because it's not by accident that, that he's known as the father of the three monolithic religions. And in Genesis 17, you find these words. And when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am the mighty God. And said to him that I am the mighty God, be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between you and me and will make thee exceedingly. And Abram fell to his face and God talked with him. God talked with him. Not spirit spook, but God talked to Abraham saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name be any more Abram, but now his name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made you, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed. Whoa. Now, if he's going to establish his covenant between Abraham, between God, his covenant, and the seed of Abraham, that's us. A lot of people want to claim that they're the true seeds of Abraham, but I share with you, you need to go back and get the tape that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan did called Who Are the Real Children of Israel? And he shared with me, and I'm quoting, he asked the question, who are the real children of Israel? To all of those who feel that the children of Israel are over in that place they call Israel, you are mistaken. It is time now that a proper dialogue be set up to answer the question that I've raised and answered. It is time for the scholars to sit down and listen to and look at scripture and prophecy to find out who is that last one that would usher in the kingdom and bring about the end of this present world, unquote. So when it speaks of this children of Israel and you see where Abraham met with God and God told him that he has made a covenant with him, Abraham and his seed, we are that seed. I want to make it perfectly clear. And he also goes on to say that, um, and I will make the nations kings and shall come out of you and I will establish my covenant between you and me and thy seed. After thee in their generation, in their generation. So that must mean in our generation for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. I will give thee unto thee and thy seed after them a land. Scripture calls it Canaan. We call it the world starting here in America. We need land, brothers and sisters. We need land. And that's what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, through the three-year economic program, as his father taught him that he is teaching us, we have to go after the land. And it's covenant here. I want to make it clear. Yes, covenant means agreement. But what kind of agreement? Covenant means also, it means to come together. So here Allah is telling Abraham that I will come together with you and your seed. So we are a people who never had a father. That's why Isaiah could talk about a virgin shall conceive. We are a people who never had God's connection since we've been kidnapped here out of Africa and brought here through the transatlantic slave trade in the year 1555. For that whole time, fulfilling Abraham's prophecy that we would be a stranger in a land that's not theirs. Now, in the Holy Quran, you find a story of Abraham in Surah 2, Ayat 124, and it reads as follows. 
And when his Lord tried Abraham with certain commands, he fulfilled them. He said, surely I will make thee a leader of men, Abraham. Abraham said, and of my offspring. Allah says to Abraham, my covenant does not include the wrongdoers. My covenant, my agreement, my connection does not include the wrongdoers. He said, and when Abraham and Ishmael raised the foundation of the house, he says, our Lord, accept from us, and thou art hearing and knowing, and our Lord, and make us both submissive to thee, and raise from our offspring. That's the power of a father as an ancestor taking on the role of the father that will advance, that would bring this in where it says, and raise from our offspring a nation submissive to thee and show us our ways of devotion and turn to us mercifully. Surely thou art off returning to mercy the merciful. Now here, hold on, we got caller. Yes, caller. Yes, first and foremost, assalamu alaikum, my brother. And well, alaikum salam, ma'am. Yes, it's, it's um, very um, empowering, um, the Praise. teaching tonight. Um, to Allah. And I heard you made a comment about the pastors, um, or people, in, you know, in the pulpit, Christians. I'm one, I'm Sister Valerie, I'm one that connects with student minister Tracy Muhammad. And, yes, ma'am, my sister, how are you? <laughs> I'm wonderful, and, <laughs> and we have kindred spirits. And it's because they're blind, it's the blind leading the blind. They don't, they don't have the third eye. Yes, ma'am. Um, Another thing is because it's about person again. Yes, um, I remember posting Ezekiel 33, 34, Jeremiah 23. They don't want to preach. They preach the same old thing. Oh, First yes. and foremost, it's because um, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan does preach truth. Yes, ma'am. And the, 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 yes. the fact of the matter is, is when I don't understand truth, I'm going to buck up against truth. Ah, and some yes, of them ma'am. know that it is true, mm -hmm. but because mm -hmm. it will allow the people to see with their third eye, come on now, oh, yes, it will allow them yes, to see with their yes, third eye, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then they will get the revelation knowledge, and yes. they will not be prostituted. Oh, and I'm sister. keeping it real. <laughs> Our people it. will become more empowered. <laughs> you are it. Thank you so much, ma'am. That's God bless you, brother. May God also, continue to bless you. If it's okay, I would like for you all to be a part of the Northside Community Unity Day that God allows us to do every year. You guys affiliated with us before. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, ma um, it's going to be September the 15th, so if you could please um, inform um, Student Minister Tracy Muhammad to contact yes, me yes, so we can come together. Brother, I would love for you to be a speaker to empower our oh. young black males about the, um, they, they are KKK now. It's called the Dixie Gun Shows. And, oh, and so, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> okay. Yes, man. Right. Thank you so much. And we would do it. God bless you as well. And continue. Okay. All right. Thank All right, you, ma'am. Thank you. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, my sister. Boy, that's powerful. And that's what the enemy hates. The enemy doesn't want us to come together as family and do the work of God. That's the bottom line. And I, I'll be honest with you. We got, I mean, that sister's powerful. And as during the time of Harriet Tugman, you know, uh, the sister's always going to come out front. And it's, but I thank a lot for you, my sister, and continue, you and your family, I pray you much success. We have to demonstrate in this city of Richmond the love that we have for our people. And the best for our people is what we want. Because if we want the best for our people, regardless of the label, because when it comes to Muslims and Christians, we really all want. We talk about Jesus, but we try to demonstrate Jesus to the people. They say, well, you know, y'all y'all don't like Jesus. Well, who are they that's saying this? See, we have to call them to the carpet today. Because the main one who said that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is not, or, or is not a lover of Jesus, then that is a straight out lie because as a Muslim, we can't even be a Muslim unless we love Jesus. Now, I'll be honest with you, the way the enemy has fashioned him and changed him, 
like I shared with you, when this man comes on the scene, he's going to reprove the world of sin and the world of righteousness and the world of judgment, meaning making decisions. See, because the way we have been taught about Jesus has been really false. Because what we have been taught about Jesus is about a blonde haired blue eyed fella that over 2000 years ago, which really was a sign of what we are to do today and look for a man that will do exactly what Jesus said that he would be doing. Open the eyes of the blind, making the lame walk, making the deaf hear. We have a man, such a man in our midst today. So if you love your people and you see this good work, like Jesus asked the, uh, his disciples, well, what are these works that, if you don't believe me, at least believe the work that I'm doing. And I share the same thing with you when it comes to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. If you don't believe him, then at least believe the work that he is doing. And we're trying with all God's help to be his disciple and representative here in the city of Richmond under the leadership of student minister Tracy Muhammad. And he has allowed me to go throughout not only Virginia, West Virginia, in the prisons to bring a message to our people of upliftment. And you're talking about hope. I mean, what greater hope can you have to know that God is present and he loves you and he's come to save you from sin. And what sin is that? The sin is that that lifestyle we had picked up by being rebellious to God and following the footsteps of Satan. As the Quran says, do not follow the footsteps of the devil. So to be saved is a way that we have to clean our lives up and we can do that. And as we do that, we have to build a community of righteousness and love for one another to where we won't have these crazy disrespectful shootings. When we get in an argument, we shoot a loved one in the face. The first thing we do is go get a gun. The first thing we do is we go get a knife and we wanna bring harm to our families, even in our ignorance, following behind that thing called alcohol or that thing called drugs. And then right after that, we're sorry for what we do. But no, brothers and sisters, we have to clean up, pull, our, pull together as a family, and let's demonstrate. I want to, and the phones are open for um, a call in. So please call in if you may. But in dealing with Father, I want to close out on how Jesus speaks of a father when he had a problem with some Jews. And really those were the ones when he shared, and I want to read from John 8, verse uh, 30, 31, when it says, if you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples. If you continue in my word. Then he said, you should know the truth and the truth should set you free. Then, of course, that upset some of those Jews that believed in him. And he said, well, why? And they answered, why would you say that we should be set free when we're Abraham's seed? We never was in bondage to no man. So why would you say we should be set free? So that clears out all of that um, madness and really lies about being in, in bondage to Pharaoh 400 years ago. That is a prophecy that we fulfilled as black people here in America. But then Jesus comes back very intelligently now and shared with him, well, I know you're Abraham's seed, but if you were Abraham's seed, then you should be doing the work of Abraham. And he says, I know you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. Well, we have another caller here. Yes, caller. I'm a Lincoln, my brother. Well, Lincoln, salam, sir. Yeah, I'm calling on your comment you just made. Yes, sir. Now, I know we need some uplifting, and we've got to pull out you, which is our future. That's what they're targeting now. Yes, sir. Am yes, I correct? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Excellent call. And I humbly share with you, too, you know, as, as the caller mentioned, you know, we have to pull up our youth, they're our future. I... I share with you this, that they are only our future if we put one in them. 
I'm going to say that again. They're only our future if we put one in them. And that's the power of being a father. Because if we don't put a future in them, somebody else will put a future in them. And they become their future. That's why I was speaking to a group at John Marshall um, High School, the varsity team, and I shared with them that you're not my future unless I put a future in you. Because how many want to become an NBA player? Hands go up, you know? So you're the future of um, Mr. Stern, head of the uh, NBA, you know? So if you want to be that, some want to be um, whatever they want to be, you ask them, but where did they get that future from? See? That's from us. Yeah. If it didn't get a future from us, then yeah. how can they be our future? They can't be. They can't be. So, so they're the drug man future. The drug man has given them a future. The alcohol man has given them a future. So he becomes the future of the drug man. The drug man will continue. The prostitutes are steady making more prostitutes. The pimps are steady making more pimps. The drug addicts are still making more drug addicts. So when, when will our future come if we don't know what our future is and give it to them? That's true. They're taking away all the technical skills from our youth. They're, they're taking them out of the schools. They're That's not true. giving them any schooling yeah. or technical training at all now. That's right. They're That's right. them out there and just putting your, they're running them through this book knowledge, but they're not giving them the common sense that they need to guide themselves through these rough times that we are now, because everything now is technical. You're right. So, You're right. You're right. away from all the uh, factory jobs. Mm hmm Computers is now where we're going. So we need our doctors, our lawyers, That's our right. dentists. That's right. That's what we need now. Yeah, I, and I agree with that. I, I, I agree, but who's putting that into our children? See, and if we're Pick not... We have to put that, put that into our children. We have to have our children to fall back in love with gaining knowledge, not from a point of getting a job, but from a point of building and giving back to a community. Yeah. And when they see themselves as a participant in a community, then they know the community will support them whatever job they decide to go into. But where we're up against, we're up against, we right in the middle of, the fall of a world. One world is going out and another world is coming in. So we are feeling the blunt of that old world is going out and they're not going out happily. No, so they're, they're going, they're so fighting to go out. So we're trying to pull from here and there just to maintain our, uh, just to maintain food, shelter, and clothing. Then you're talking about dealing with the children then if we don't have a community of support, then the, the problem overwhelms us. And yeah. so we would say, well, just, hey, just forget it. So we'll find comfort, you know, and, and, and uh, just say, really forget it. I find comfort in my drinking or in my drugs or just sit at home or just, you know, whichever's comfortable. And we're like a people like water. We will seek um, the level of least resistance. So if you, if you put a, um, a, some pressure on us, we somebody not to be there. But we have to instill in our youth a future of loving themselves and knowing that knowledge is their birthright. And they don't have to go out and get a job. They need to create a world. And yeah. if you study those founding fathers, those Europeans who, after stealing the country, set up a government. And from there, they have been perpetuating that government all the way up to this day. But now you see a world falling. But we have to give our people, our young people, a world. We have to step out of the lie that's been taught to us for so many years. That's it. That's it. And we can take the cities. We can take these areas. Like we're talking about the different trades and things. Prior to uh, Reconstruction, when, when uh, they first uh, passed the Emancipation Proclamation, the only one that had labor was the slaves. We were the carpenters. We were the electricians. You know, white folk wasn't doing no work. So they were afraid of us, so they brought in different unions. That's why that book called Secret Relationships Between Blacks and Jews by the Nation of Islam Research Department is so important. 
to look at what happened to us. But we can go back now and, and, and to guide our young people toward those disciplines, whether it's in medicine, we're talking about health care. They never mention one thing when it comes to health care. You never hear them mentioning if you had more doctors and the doctors wasn't geared to pharmaceuticals and greed and with the doctors would tell the patients the truth about um, prevention and staying away from the hog, eating the pig, bad food. You know, and, and if the doctors would just teach the people how to eat to live, then you could cut down this whole thing called health expenses. So it's really, we would never have independence or freedom under the white man's world. Just that simple. And our children would always be, at, be vulnerable to them until we separate. Do we have to leave America? No, we don't. But every community has a community, and we need to come together in our community and have our young people to respect one another in our community. And as they see, as the fathers do, like Jesus said, I do what my father do. I say what my father say. Me and my father is one. So when our sons can say that about us, we're on the right road. That's my your whole message to Father's Day tonight. Your father's message is so true because back when I come up in the early 80s, yes, the sir. village raised us. They said, if we walk down the street to where these youngsters are walking today with our britches hanging down, they will pull them the rest of the way. Yeah. You understand? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then those that didn't pull them down would laugh at you, so it ridicule you to the point that you would pull them back. Yes. We didn't just walk yeah. by and turn a blind eye and was You're scared right. to speak to them. We spoke yeah. to our youngs, and they spoke to me. Right, spoke straight That's to right. them. Excellent straight point. Them. That's right, call them out. Excellent point, brother. Excellent point. And now today, we act as though we're afraid of our own children. Afraid of, they're afraid yeah. of their kids. They yeah. know the youngsters that they, they walk past them, yeah. they run away from them, mm -hmm. and don't want to say nothing to them. Yeah. And that's what yeah. we got to stop that. We do. And you see, it's not by accident. No, it's see, not. See, because when you allow a father, when a father can't discipline his child in his home, and the police come in and the child called 911, yeah. and the police come in and they're going to lock the father up for disciplining a 15 year old daughter, the, the police really should have shook the father's hand and told him, keep up the good work. But no, we are just like during the time. Uh, if you saw that movie, uh, the, the maids or uh, uh, back in the 50s where it showed our mothers working uh, with, with, uh, as servants. And you notice that even during the time of the boycotts in Montgomery, when it came to doing something or making a move, you found out who all the enemies were. So our people were surrounded. The police was against them. So they couldn't go to the police. Then you turn around, you couldn't go to the judges because the judge was their brother. Then you couldn't go to the grocery store because the grocery store owner was the brother of the police. So you found us in a community surrounded by all of those things that should protect you as a citizen never was there. So you found that against them. So when it came to the boycotts, when it came to those things in uh, Montgomery, Alabama, you found that the police, when they stopped riding the bus, the police start putting tickets on the cars when they start using their own cars. So my point is that when it comes to, to us as fathers, we are at war, as Minister Farrakhan teaches us. And we have to know that it's not going to be easy because this enemy don't want us to take control of our families, give them right guidance, and support them. They always want, it's, it's the story of the blind man all over again. The story of the blind man, when he was sitting on the side of the road, blind, begging, Jesus comes by, and then when Jesus opened the eyes of the blind, notice that the Pharisees didn't care nothing about the blind man until Jesus came and performed a work on him. And once he started to see, then everybody got some questions. Well, how is it that you see? You know, the way that you see is because the man that did this, you know, he was he did it on the Sabbath day. So he was um, he was a lawbreaker. The blind man was real smart. I like his answer. He said, well, I 
I don't know whether he was a righteous man or not, but I do know one thing. Where I was blind, now I see. Point is, the enemy always want to keep us bagging at the footsteps of them. And they want our children to constantly bag them. That's why when they go to college, they have such big college loans. And they got to pay back these college loans. You got countries right now that they, the children go to college free of charge. Don't pay nothing for it. China does that. Yeah, a lot of countries like that. Cuba is one. Cuba is one. Mm -hmm. Children don't pay nothing it, to go it, to college. It's, unre it's, it's unreal the way the, U the United States is pretty much beating down its own people just for greed. It's yeah. all about greed now. Oh, it is, but the, the, the other part about that, we never was Americans. Never. Go back and immigrants. We, yeah, we really we never were immigrants because we didn't come over here looking for nothing. We were kidnapped and brought over here. Oh, that's right. So we're not immigrants, nor are we an Americans. We were we were brought here for slaves as slaves. We were brought here yeah. for one reason and Mercy one reason night. only to make money for the Europeans. Now that they have no more need for You're us, right. then hey, they don't want to pay us a decent wage. So now they just allow us to go out and get crazy and kill each other. You know, they have no other need for us. But then God speaks of him coming. And God comes, he's going to take the rejected, the despised, the foolish people. See, we had to go through all of that to fulfill scripture. And now that scripture is being fulfilled, the enemy wants to rob us, you and I, out of our salvation. Yes, that's the key. But the lie is just too, it's been overturned. Oh, yeah. That's the truth coming yeah. through. Oh, it you is. You see it through all the lies now. Oh, it is. Because you know, the thing they've done is that they had no problem putting their truth out there. No, no, no. Even when today. When you watch any of those movies or their biographical mm -hmm. shows, they talk and they do all the nasty and dirty things that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Right yeah. there, put it out there. Yeah. They don't hide it all. None of what they've done. No. All of our children know something about the Holocaust. The white on white crime in Germany. Yeah. But how many of us know about the black Holocaust? You know, how many of us know about the transatlantic yeah. slave trade? How many of us know about Jim Crow? How many of us know about segregation? You know, all of these things it that happened to us. Here. Yes. So we have to educate our people there. City. Yes. Yes, sir, Carla. You, you're right on it. You are absolutely yeah, right. This on. was a big. This started a whole lot of the madness right here on our dock, down at that bottom that they're trying to build up. So yes, bad. they're trying to cover and try to rewrite history, but it all started right here in Virginia. Yeah, in the year right fifteen fifty-five. Right yes, there. right here, right down in Williamsburg, Virginia. First slave came over here in the year fifteen fifty-five. Thank you so much, Carla. We got five more minutes to get out of here. Thank you so much. And may Allah continue to bless you and guide you. And if you can, please come and be with us this coming Sunday to hear a powerful Father's Day message from uh, student minister Tracy Muhammad this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock. We would love to have you. I, I do my best. As-salamu alaykum. Well, alaykum salam. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, I want to thank you once again and announce that Brother Kill will be releasing a new video for Father's Day on Saturday the 16th of Fathers and Sons, the original fathers of the earth. And also make sure that you have your latest edition of the Final Call newspaper. And this coming Sunday, we would ask you to please come out with your family to be with us this coming Sunday at 11 o'clock at Muhammad Mosque number 24. That's 104 Coordon Avenue. 104 Coordon Avenue, a block up from Hull Street, right there on the corner, can't miss it. And hear a mighty message from student minister Tracy Muhammad. Once again, thank you brothers and sisters. May Allah bless you with the light of understanding. Assalamu alaikum. Hey
that you can say I'm a believer 